Phil Scott is here. Phil is the host of the Advice Show TV on YouTube. And I've interviewed Phil a couple times, I think. And he's been very, very interested. He's in L.A. First of all, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Jess. How you doing? And so all is well. What are you doing in L.A.? I'm actually going to the VidCon uh, convention at the uh, Anaheim Convention Center. Oh, I see. So that's what brought me out here. That's amazing. I never imagined one day you'd be sitting in my studio. I didn't imagine that either. <laughs> <laughs> you and I don't agree on anything, right? Um, we agreed to sky blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, welcome to L.A. And, well, thank you. And, I appreciate uh, it. I'm glad you're here. Um, first of all, I have a short soundbite I want to get to in a minute here, but just a little bit about you. Um, are you a Christian? Um, no, I wouldn't consider I'm a Christian, no. I'm a servant. You're what? I'm a servant. What's a servant? Uh, someone who serves the will of God and his people. And did you become a servant without becoming a Christian? Um, that's something that I feel the word Christian is a made-up name. So I feel servant is the best way to be. And do you believe in God? Oh, yeah. You course. believe in God. Have you ever been a Christian? Um, I considered myself Christian at one point in time. And why did you consider yourself a Christian then? Didn't know no better. How did you become a Christian then? Uh, just grazed up in the Baptist church oh, you know, with family and, um, you know, it was just a tradition. Your parents were a uh, Christian. And so you're walking down the road and one day you decided, I don't want to be a Christian. No, it's just a lot of things that's attached to that um, for me, especially in, in this country. Um, it's not what I feel is the right way. I feel being a servant and following um, the scriptures the best way you can, not say you're perfect. Um, serving the people and being humble, I feel, is the best way to go. What is it about Christianity you don't like? Um, it's not Christianity itself. It's what I feel the American form of Christianity is what I can't get along with, and I feel the majority of the black community can't get along with. But the only problem I have with the black community kind of uh, cross-referencing the American version of Christianity versus, let's say, more so what the scriptures would say, you know, do and to apply to your life. Is there another version of Christianity somewhere in the world that you like? Uh, I don't really attach myself to that word. I feel you follow the scriptures and, and serve, and that's what the best way to be. Give us an example of something that the black people can't relate to or get a uh, concern in Christianity, the Amer American version of Christianity. Oh, uh, we could take something just very similar to, um, let's say, don't kill. Let's say that. Now, yes, we have issues in the black community where we have black people yeah, killing about each to other. Say, blacks are killing more than anybody yeah. else on earth. <laughs> nah, I don't know. Let's well, not go there. A, at least that's in America, not blacks not go killing. there. So they're not, they're not having a problem with don't kill. Oh, no, no, no. Let me tell you something. Black people can never catch up with um, those who are in power who have killed, and they're still killing to this day. But what, so do you mean that, what do you mean that black people in America have a problem with don't kill thing? People, people, when I say they have a problem now, of course, you got criminals in, in every group. OK. And uh, those who are in our community who's doing that, a lot of them are lost and they need help. A lot of them. And that's kind of why I take it. But we're talking about the, the decent people who are and used to be considered themselves Christian and, and think the basic thing is the Ten Commandments. I'm just using one like killing, lying, stealing, et cetera. Right. Um, we're not seeing that reciprocated in society by those who say they are Christian and they are in leadership because black people are not in leadership. So when you see people who say they're Christian, but yet it's okay to um, give an excuse to killing people sanctioned by the government, like a police officer, um, or let's say you're looking at a lot of things that people, even in society, Joe Public, would say, oh, well, they must have deserved it. Like, well, no, people, don't, you shouldn't say people deserved it, right? You're supposed to be a so-called Christian, and it's not your room to say somebody should live or die, correct? So it's, it's a, so many things. I'll have to take but about there, two hours explaining that to but you. But the reason that black people can't see it because they lead in the way in breaking all of the commandments. You serious, Jesse Lee? That's a heart attack. And who taught them to break the commandments? Uh, their lack of good parenting. And how did they get a lack of good parenting? Um, the blacks have turned away from God. They don't, most black people, not all, not all, but most black people 
do not believe in God. How do you know you believe in God? Because I believe in God. That's How do you know only, that? That's something only me and God could relate to. I mean, it's nothing I could I could show you on a on a litmus test of my beliefs or not. That's within my heart. So there is nothing in you that can show to me or anyone else that you believe in God. Pretty sure if you look at my life and some things that I do and, and some things I hold myself back from, um, it'd be evident of that. And but right now you can't think of one thing that I uh, that you can show me that implies that you believe in God. Well, I'm not really used to trying to prove to mankind my beliefs. Do you love white people? Um, hmm. If those that are decent, I mean, I respect all people, but I can't. But I, I'm also focused on the love of my community. Do you love white people? I respect all people, but I have to focus more on my love of my community because of the crime you're talking about, because of the self-hatred, because of those who are lost, for those who are hurting. They need the love uh, more so than anything. So I have to focus on that. I can't focus on other groups. I have to focus on what we do. Do you be- do you love white people? I respect everybody, but I have to focus more love on my community. Do you love white people? And you keep asking the same question. Because you're, not the answer, same you're not answering the question. I say I respect all people. But that's not the question. Well, I can't love people I don't know. That's not the question. Do but you that's love, the answer. <laughs> do you love white people? I respect anybody. But I'm but not I asking you the, if you respect. Okay. I'm asking if you love them. What is it important if I love them or not? I'll tell you once you answer me. Do you love white people? I don't know them to have a love for them like that anyway. <clears throat> do you I, say, know I respect all, all people. Do you know all black people to have a love for them? I don't know all of them, but I have a respect for them and I understand their history and they do need a lot of love. And you talk about this a lot, that they need a lot of love and forgiveness and forgiving parents and and all that comes from a lack of love. Do you love all black people? I love my community. How about all black people? Those there's some black people that I don't even want to talk to. If if those as as I killing black people, those hold on. And those who are dealing poison to black people, those who are uh, doing evil, I have no love for them. No, I don't. How about white people? You love all white people? Um, I respect them. But not love them? I can't say I love them. I say I respect them. Do you love your enemy? No. Oh, then you don't love God. Okay. Well, that's You're your not, opinion. You don't believe in him and you don't love him because it's impossible to believe in God and not love all people. Even your enemy. Okay, well, and at, you at the end of the day, whites, when I'm judged, I'll love, holler at God about that. Well, no, I'm telling you now, before you die, he doesn't want you to wait until you die. It'd be too late. Well, put it like this. Because you God go up, hates evil. You go God, up, okay, you know good and well God hates evil, Jesse. He hates it. So I should never love evil. I should never love anyone who commits evil, whether it's in my uh, particular community or anyone outside my community. I should never love evil. If you don't love white people and if you don't love your enemy— and if you don't love all black people, you love no one. You don't love God. That's your opinion. No, that's a fact. <laughs> well, thank God we don't live on your facts because that is a complete Those are opinion. not my facts. Those are his facts. Do you go by the Bible? For the most part. Not all the way. Okay. Well, what's, what's the point of that? What do you mean by mo- for the most part? But what is the, the purpose of the line of questioning? What do you mean? Uh, because I want to get to the sound bite. What do you mean by for the most part? I follow the most part that I can apply to my life, and I say I, I fall short like anybody else, but I would do my best. Have you read in the Bible to love your enemy? I read that. You omitted that, though? You threw that out? No, no. I, no, I, I've read that, but, but also God hates it. evil, and yeah. I should never love evil. So when you read love your enemy, you're like, uh-uh, God hates evil. I'm not going to love my enemy. Well, this country don't love their enemies, do you? And that's why you don't love yours? But do you tell do you tell this country to love their enemies? No, Madison, that's why you don't love your enemy, because you think that the country don't love its enemies? No, I don't love no enemy because they're doing evil things. And Amazing. I'll explain to you that a lot of people do evil things that I don't get down with. Amazing. Do you do evil things? I don't feel I do. Do you? I don't feel I do. Do you do evil things? Uh, do you ever do evil things? Do you do evil things? No, I'm asking you that first. You're my guest. Okay. Well, I don't feel I do anything evil. No, not that you feel that way. Well, that's the only way I can answer but, you, Jesse. But don't you know yourself? You would know if I, you And I know evil. myself enough to tell you I'm not doing evil things. You don't do evil things? No. Uh, okay. Um, do we have time for this soundbite, uh, 20-1? Uh, if you go to it right now. 
Okay, I want you to hear this sound bite from your show. Okay. This is from the Field Advice Show TV. Field address is Pat Robertson. Here we go. Pat Robinson, Pat Robinson, Pat Robinson. Come on, man. You talking about the Bible, which I know you're not capable of following the Bible. I've definitely figured that portion out because you're not standing up against racism and white supremacy. Then you're not a Christian. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So you accuse Pat of not standing up against so-called racism or white supremacists, so-called white supremacists. Right. But you don't love all white people. Don't know them all, too. So you feel good judging Pat? Oh, yes, I do. How about do you judge yourself for being wrong? Yes, I, yes, I judge myself all the time. So, I'm the hardest judge So do myself. you know that you're wrong for not loving all white people? Why Do you know the world's outside of just white people, right? You know, I can understand you saying you love question. people in the world. You want Pat Robertson to deal with uh, white supremacists and racism, right? Yeah. And what do you want him to do? I want him to speak up against it. And where is uh, where is uh, white supremacists or racism? Where there, does that exist? It exists in uh, definitely all over this country, every institution um, in America that has white control and domination. Um, and it's about white power. It's not about equality. And where's the uh, proof of that? Uh, you just look at the different things in society that they control. Like no non-white people in this society don't control the nine areas of activity. They don't control like they, Dr. They don't Neely control Fuller. what? They don't control the nine areas of activity spoken by Dr. Neely Fuller. Like this is black, uh, just people outside. What of are white. the nine areas of activity? Uh, okay, they don't control economics. But black people don't control that. They don't control entertainment. They don't control uh, politics whatsoever. They don't control war. They don't control labor. So let me ask, um, prior to the civil rights movement, okay. black people made their own money, they bought their own land, they did their own thing, mm -hmm. they were financially wealthy, uh, but they decided somehow or another to give it up and become reliable on the, on the government to take care of them. And then they decided not to think for themselves, but to allow the uh, so-called civil rights leaders to think for them. And they decided to make truckloads of babies out of wetlock, so the black man left at home. If black people didn't have 77 percent of black babies were not born out of wetlock by black women who were born in this country, if the black man stopped acting like women and complaining about what the white man is doing and become men, get married, uh, raise their children, provide, would the economic situation change for black people? You asked. You asked about. 12 different questions and, and, and you that's a so loaded of a question you have to break so that back loaded? down I said it's a loaded question you, How's you, that loaded? You, you touch so many topics that each one of your your responses deserve a, a particular answer if black so people, let's, let's go back to what you were saying let's do prior. number one let's do number one and black men stop sitting around complaining about no, the white man let's go back man. to what you said at first and about no, segre, uh, black people no, in, I'm going to work my way down to that um, if, if black men stop acting like little wimpy white uh, black women and complaining about what the white man has or don't have or do for them or won't do and become men, if they got married and fathers and mothers become decent people and raise their children, would the economic situation change? No. It would you, not you, change. You, even, if it, even if people do exactly what you're saying, and, I, and I'm, I'm just, and people know me, I'm just going along with you right now because um, <clears throat> nobody cares who have what. Or whatever. Everybody just want equality. Everybody for them. Well, everybody I know want jobs. They don't want the. Gov I don't even promote the government assistance. Black people don't need government assistance at all. They need jobs. They need businesses. But why don't you people and, create your own well, who's job? You, who's your people? The black men. Instead of are begging, you black man? If you believe that the white Hold on, man. Hello, are you black man? Yeah, but I'm not. Okay, a part can you of, say you? What do you mean you're not a part? I'm of not it? a part of that men, uh, black uh, uh, um, helpless. Victim who are thinking. I'm an independent man. I don't identify with any of that mess. But you still but, a black man, right? But let me ask. But let me ask. If black, why is it that black men, like all other races of men, why don't you stop begging the white man for to give you a job and all that instead build your own job? I promote that. I promote doing for no, yourself. No, you're not. You're, I, I, you're blaming I, I, I the white promote, man. Don't I give promote, you work. What, what, what did you you're say? saying the white man won't give you a job. I said promote jobs. I didn't say give me a job. I believe in doing for yourself. I believe in creating your own businesses. Why That's do you what need I a white man to promote jobs? Why don't you promote them? 
What's different about the white man than you? Oh, let's see. He stole everything he has. He got two hundred forty years. What has he stolen I, I, from a you? Free, a free labor from black people. What black has he people stolen from black country. people today? Oh, he stole our culture. He stole our language. He stole our heritage. <laughs> he stole our labor. He murdered and slaughtered our children, our babies, um, our women, our men. Uh, do we need to continue stole inventions that we couldn't patent because What's they created language? a patent office? What's your language that they stole? Uh, the different African dialects they stole. We didn't come here speaking English. But white people speak English. They don't speak African dialect. So, we're like, so when we came off the ships, we didn't speak English. So you stole our language. What do you mean they stole it? Um, they wouldn't allow you to speak it, and they'll beat the hell out of you or kill you. So, so you, you stole came it. off the ship speaking black stuff? What is black stuff? It's African language. Uh, yeah, you came off the ship speaking that? My ancestors did. What's preventing you from speaking it now? All you do, go but, learn it and speak because, it. No one cares. What's preventing me from speaking it now? Because, number one, uh, we lived in a colonized society. <laughs> we speak a colonized language. And so, How unfortunately, come? we have to teach our children English. You know, why is it that black men, such as yourself, don't feel embarrassed publicly complaining about white men and how they're holding you back? And you got all these excuses. Normal men don't have excuses. That's funny, normal men. I would love to hear your explanation of normal men. But the thing is this. Men who are not it, like no, women. We should, we should should be embarrassed about, Jesse, is calling Donald Trump the great white hope. We should be embarrassed about Why is should asking, I be embarrassed by that? asking a black man, do you love white people only and no other group of people? I can understand if the question would have been, hey, you love you know everybody throughout the world. You love all you know mankind. I don't understand the question, but you always home on that. White people, white people, white people. Do you believe racism exists? No, it doesn't exist. It's a made-up lie. Really? It has never existed. And you hear this coming from a guy who I grew up in Alabama. I grew up under the Jim Crow laws. And um, during those days, black men and women were not wimping and whining and begging because they were truly children of God for the most part. And they knew that it was good and evil. And that there were good white people and bad white people, good black people and bad black people. And the Jim Crow law was a government law created by the Democrats. It wasn't all white people. It's only lately that black men been acting like women complaining about the white man. Well, why did you tell that liberal white woman that got in your face uh, that she was a racist? Why did you say that? That was at, good question. That was at the uh, Second Amendment rally, and those people were against the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. And they used the liberals, the children of the lie, meaning the liberal media, the Democrats, the right of Republican, others. They used racism to manipulate, control, and put fear in white people, so I turned it. I turned it on her. So, but I thought racism don't her. exist. So I how could you how could you turn it if it don't exist? Because I would give her her own medicine. So you yeah. believe? So you don't at know that, that moment. Mean. At that moment, you make it, everyone believe that racism exists. Cause you you should be the first one to say racism don't exist. Can you preach it every day? No, I did it the way it should have been done. I switched it on the lie, the liar. So you use racism. At when you need to, but uh, you don't on, understand on your that? audience. No, your audience, you pander and say racism don't no, exist. A, no. But you tell a white woman who is treating you like a black man at that point in time, treating you like a black man. What did that mean, treating me but, like oh, a black man? You, oh, yeah, because she was talking to you any kind of way. The white people, they were letting them get away with all kind of stuff. When you came around, they were treating you different. And that's I don't why care you about call, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah that's why you say she's a black racist. Black people treat me worse than any white person on this side of heaven. But I, most, not all, but most black people are angry, they're nasty, they have no sense of self-respect or more respect, they are whiners and whimpers and, you know. So how do that's they treat why, you bad? That's uh, why I don't they, know how they treat you bad. They call me names and they attack. They call they, me names too. And they threaten and they, 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 threaten. they just have uh, I've no gotten threats. I've gotten threats from black this. people, white people, everybody. Let me do this. Um, oh, you, you, you're married, right? Okay. We're not going to go there. No, you are family. married. Yes, but no, that's it's not, not about your family. It's about you. You married? Yes. Are you the head of your wife? I am the leader of my household. Are you the head of your wife? I am the leader of my household. I'm not asking about the household. Your wife is not the household. Are you the head of your wife? You say you Je believe in God. Yes, I do. Jesse. We're not gonna go there again. Every time I come on here, you say that. I say I it, lead my household. My wife. You uh, know, we discuss things, and she follows. You know, the leadership, if I'm about to do something that's maybe screwed up, she said, hey, I think that's kind of screwed up. What would happen if Jesse, you— Jesse, let me, let me answer your question. If I'm about to do something screwed up, she tell me a lot of times she's right when I'm about to screw something up because I'm not perfect. Some things she's better at than me, but she follows the, the leadership and guidance of what, you know, we want to follow in so my So you're household. not the head of your wife? 
Jesse, if you say leadership, what is a leader? I, I didn't ask about leadership. Jesse, my God. <laughs> okay, if Donald Trump, he's the leader of America, so what that makes him? The great white hope. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want to hold you over for a few oh, minutes and take some calls. Do you mind? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Phil, do you believe that um, there's such a thing as homophobism? No. Do you agree with homosexuality? I don't agree with it, no. Is it wrong? Scripturally, yes. Um, how about um, um, what's happening at our borders right now? The illegal aliens are trying to come into our country and they want to bring all the children and we don't want that to happen. Are you in support of illegal aliens coming across the borders? No, I'm not. But I, there's a better way to do that. It's a better way to do it. What you're seeing now. What's the better way to do it? Well, we already have laws on the books that can stop a lot of that. And without going to this extreme measure that we're seeing right now with children being separated. Um, we what do have you a, mean we, children being separated well, from what? Well, come on, Jess. We're we looking at the news where kids are being separated from their parents. And, um, do you think that's being, wrong? Yeah, that's wrong. How about the American citizens who commit crimes and have children? They go to jail, leave their kids behind. Is that wrong? When they commit crimes, that do happen, but they're actually committing a crime, and these people are coming for running from MS-13, because a lot of these countries, they're running from MS, the same MS-13 that Trump's talking about, a lot of them running from uh, MS-13, but if you want to solve illegal immigration, I want to solve it with you. I feel that illegal immigration um, has, you know, talking about the black community aspect, it has affected the black community. Uh, we don't have sanctuary cities for black people. We don't have sanctuary states for black people. We have no city or state that we can go to and not worry about being uh, dealing with racism, uh, crooked cops, or whatever else. So, so but I want to know when uh, Americans commit crimes mm -hmm. and they have children, the 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 adult goes to jail. The the father or the mother, whomever commit the crime, right. go to jail. Is right. that wrong to separate them from the children? Well, usually the court system put them with uh, another family member, the child. They put them with another family member. They look for someone, and that child goes to that family member while that particular person is incarcerated. With this situation, these children aren't going to another family member. Um, they are just being separated and put in look like internment camps. I've seen the pictures. And, and, the, and the parents, are, for what I just heard this morning, the parents are being deported and the kids are staying here. My thing is, if you want to deport people, um, keep the parents with their children, and then if you're going to deport them, then deport them. I want to restate the question. When adults in America who have children Correct. commit a crime, whether Correct. it's the mother or the father, mm -hmm. they go to jail and leave the children behind. Is that wrong? Do they, they leave the children behind. Yes, they leave the children behind, and those Is children, are, uh, Jesse, and those children are not put in camps like we see now. They are given to <clears throat> by the courts to another family member, or possibly placed in the foster care system. You're now, if they was doing that, Jesse, then that would be a different situation. But you're not answering my question. I answered your question. Is it wrong to put the American citizen who are parents? in jail when they commit a crime and leave the children That's behind. not the issue, Jess. It's what's happening that is to the, the issue. kids. That's what's happening it's at the border. The kids aren't being transferred to either a family member so you can't or just going with question. the parents. So, Jesse, you like the people to answer the way you want it to be answered. I want the truth. And I'm, give, and I'm giving you my so truth. So is it wrong? You say you believe in God. So let me give me God's God, truth. We're talking to Jesse and Phil. God is not sitting here asking this question. Is Jesse Lee So you're not representing God today? I'm representing myself today. But, but not God? I represent myself today. <laughs> Are oh, you so, representing God? Yes. Really? Yes. You are? Yes. I'm a son of God, and I represent him at all times. But you don't, apparently. <laughs> okay, Jesse. All right. Amazing. The word, the word comes So you're not going to answer that question. Uh, let me just say welcome to the uh, YouTube Live. Thank you for tuning in, everybody, and their mama. And I do appreciate it. Let me go to Dennis out of Lillington. Is it New Hampshire? Uh, Lillington, New Hampshire. Dennis, thank you for calling. You're on with... Feel the advice. I have a question for your guests. I have a big, big problem with this white supremacy debate. And I know it's all about the black people having advanced due to slavery. I, I, I get it all. That's where it comes from. I don't from. get that. They're lying. Well, I, I know. But listen now. Here's my question to him. Let's roll back the hands of time. Before 
the Europeans settled this continent, the black people that were in the continent of South Africa, where would they be today? What would their position be, better off or worse off, had this country not been discovered? That's my question. Uh, they, they would be better off, actually. I beg your pardon? They'd be better off. Okay, so, so what's the issue with white supremacy? White people did find, found the nation. The founders were white. I get that. There was no black people in the paintings. No, I understand didn't find, all that. They didn't find anything. That was they, the they, demographic it was already at that discovered time. while I was here. Slavery they came was, and they slaughtered. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Dennis, Millions uh, of, go ahead. Finish your question ahead. real fast. Millions of people died for it, and you're free. Have at it. The one thing I missed from your whole discussion with Jesse is the fact that the black person now has opportunity. No, what gave him the opportunity? No, we don't. This country. No, we don't. No, we don't. Our, our life could be taken at any given moment. It don't matter who you are. By so other blacks. By, by, by definitely white supremacy. No, more black people killing you than white people ever thought okay. of killing you. Oh, no, they haven't. No, no, no. No, they haven't. That's not true. You're not being honest. I am being honest. You're saying more white people are killing you than blacks. Yes. That's for you. Yeah. I thought you believed that, in that's God. That's a lie. That's no, that's, true. that's, that's true. Out, out lie. You kill, you're killing us through GMOs. You're killing us through medication. Oh, you're killing us well, through... Oh, oh, why you saying, oh, Lord? Lord. That, that's part of killing you. <laughs> don't eat the GMO. <laughs> oh, man. Phil, I want to take some more calls for you here because we're running out of time. Yeah, yeah, take uh, it. Eric, Eric is from... Um, Denver, Colorado, first-time caller. Eric, thank you for calling, and thanks for holding. You're on the air. You are the greatest uh, newborn American to me in my life. I just discovered <laughs> you. I was doing your call screen, and you are fabulous. <laughs> well, thank you for that. But, I appreciate that. I mean, you're a, I'm a fan now until eternity. There you go. <laughs> do you uh, do you know by chance Terry Anderson? Do you remember him? I remember Terry very yeah. well. Terry was a good man from South Central L.A., a black man, and Terry absolutely he fought to keep until his death. He fought to keep the illegals out of our country. Let me ask my guest Phil. Phil, do you want the Great White Hope to put a big beautiful wall around the borders? And especially since the illegal aliens are coming in and affecting black people first and foremost by moving into their communities, running the blacks out because they hate black people, uh, taking over the educational system, health care, the jobs away from blacks. Are you in favor of the Great White Hope putting a big, beautiful wall around the border? I'm in favor of enforcing the laws of existence, and we don't need a wall to do that. So you don't want the wall around the border? We broke. We had twenty trillion dollars in debt. How are we gonna spend twenty five? What twenty five billion? Right for a wall? Oh, whatever it costs. Do you want the wall around the border? We are broke. That's not the question. Do you want the wall around the border? It does, it's not gonna fix anything. They got tunnels into the U.S. already. So is that a yes or no? It doesn't make sense to spend my tax dollars on a wall when we broke. Spend twenty five billion dollars on fixing the communities across the country, the infrastructure, education system, give our teachers raises. Um, there's a lot of things you could do with twenty five I think twenty five billion dollars. Do you want the wall or no? No, I don't really know. It's a waste of time. Uh, amazing. So you don't want the wall. No, I want you to enforce the laws on the books. So do you care that illegal aliens are affecting blacks first and foremost? I definitely care that um, the black community is affected. Sure, I care. Would the, in a negative way. So would the wall prevent that from happening by keeping these people if, out? If you put, just put the wall up and that's it, just throw the wall, it's not going to stop people from violating the laws on the books. You have to understand, if we would go to, we have a thing Violated called E-Verified. what laws on the book? E, we have E-Verified. When you, you hire okay? somebody, um, if you go to mandatory E-Verify and lock up anybody who's hiring illegals, that will up. stop That will I, stop a lot of people. Amazing. Eric, go ahead. You want to make another point. Yes. Eric, go ahead, yes, buddy. Yes, I did. Yes, I did, young man. Um, what I wanted to do, because I'm, I'm, do you know Peter Boyle? He's a great friend of uh, Lou Dobbs on Fox News, but Peter Boyle. No, I don't, I don't um, know him. Yes, he well, what I wanted to do, young man, is to uh, collaborate and, and then correspond to where I could call him to give him your uh, credentials. Okay. And you got to be you got to be the father or the uncle or godfather of Candace Owens <laughs> from uh, Turning Point. Amazing. Um, you know, we are on Newsmax. 
my show is on Newsmax Monday through Friday, the first hour of the show. I'm looking, from, right, I'm looking right at you right now. Okay. I, I taped it, and I uh, could, you know, I could go back because I've got a guest over, and I want to— well, Let me give you to James, and he'll give you the contact information. All right? Hold on. James will take over my producer. Let me go to Rod out of uh, Lincoln, New Jersey, our first-time caller. Rod, thank you for uh, calling. Yeah, Jesse. I'm from North Carolina. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Go yeah, ahead. That whole uh, being racist thing, I never believed in it. And I think black people use that as a crutch. They do. And I think because he's blaming himself because he can't get up and do anything for himself. So I really, <laughs> really believe that's what his problem is. And by the way, I forgive my mother and my father, and I say this out of prayer every day. Right on, man. Congratulations. You. I found you on the Internet, and you changed my life. Right on. Yeah, racism don't, don't thank exist, you, you benefit from it, All right. Sir. Thank uh, you, Jesse. All right. Uh, most people see black people, and most people don't respect, other cultures don't respect blacks anymore because they are women and whining and begging and blaming. And then you let them in these schools and places on affirmative action, not because they qualify. And then they turn on the white people. Jesse, you lying the truth, not in you. I'm lying about what? You lying about everything you're saying. You're saying black people as a monolith. Do you have some black people? Not that, all, that, not all, not all, but oh, most. Okay, so so, but you're speaking, you're speaking as black people in a monolith. Why don't you talk about the black people who are getting into Ivy League universities and getting their education? affirmative action. Uh, you cannot get into an Ivy League university on affirmative black, action alone. You, if you're black. No, you can't. Yes, you have to make black. the scores. No, 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 not black people. Jesse, I have you proof. have to make the scores, Jesse. I have proof. You have to make the scores. Okay. Those black people are getting, what about all these black kids that's getting in, affirmative accepted action. to all the Ivy League schools? Affirmative action. And they didn't make the SAT scores no. to get in. Blacks are not they didn't required. have the GPA to get in. They're not required Je to make the Jesse, are you serious? SAT. They yeah. don't lower the standard for blacks. I have proof. Jesse, no, the Ivy League schools do not lower the standards for blacks. May I give you the proof? Give me the proof of how they lower SAT scores, GPA, and everything to get black people specifically in Ivy League schools. Um, the um, the um, We just did a story on the air traffic control. And um, according to the story, black people um, are not required. Well, black people are allowed to cheat on the test, while white people who have earned their way, and some of them are even pilots from the military and things like that, they are, and they qualify, and they're smart, they are pushed to the side. And along with the Rainbow Push and other and the Black Pilot Association or something, they have got it set up where black people are allowed to fail the test to get an F in order to get into the, um, the uh, become air traffic controller and pilots. Okay, Jesse, We reported what, what, on that this okay. week. And the same thing with the story. universities. I don't know about that story, but, but, you, say, not, about but you, you said you had a fact. I'm about to say, uh, hold, hold on, on, hold on. Go ahead. And with the universities, uh, the SAT scores from black people does not have to be as high as normal people, because they have, they have come to a conclusion that blacks are not capable of working hard and being individuals, studying and earning their way. And they, again, turn them, they turn them in. And then when they let the blacks in, the blacks say, we want a day without whites. Okay, Jesse, I rest again. my case. Jesse, you and them alternative facts. And, and, and that, that's amazing. Now, that's amazing. Case. That's amazing. <laughs> now, that's amazing. They're alternative facts. I like that, Jesse. <laughs> Back Love black moment. people, Jesse. I do love them. Phil, I really appreciate you coming in. Okay, thanks for having me. And whenever you're in town, let us know. Oh, yeah, that's that, I, I definitely let, let you know. And, um, you know, based off what you were saying earlier about, about victim and, and, and Yeah, and blacks need to stop being victimized. Well, well you when know, the thing is, but, we are, but we, we are, until we stop being victimized, and yes, I'm a victim too in this system. But I'm white a victim, people are not victimizing. You have Because they're the colonists. They the col like, we gave oh, y'all Obama. Obama didn't do nothing for worse. blacks. Obama didn't do nothing for blacks. Actually, now I'm going to talk about Trump. Can we talk about Trump the just two minutes? The great white hope. Two minutes. Yes. Donald Trump is doing more for black people than Obama ever did, and I appreciate it for it. I appreciate it for it because black people are waking up, and I and I thank Donald Trump for helping us to wake up. That's what I said. Oh, and God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and one more thing. That's um, why I call him the Great White Hope. Uh, uh, white because women benefit more of affirmative action than not blacks. True. Yes, the it is white true. lesbian women. Are they white? Lesbian. Are yes. they white? White lesbian. Okay, so white women benefit from affirmative action more than anyone else. So if black people develop a sense of pride 
we wouldn't have all those programs where other people are using them. Because you're right, the white lesbians uh, uh, are getting more benefit, but they use black people in order to get affirmative action. Because black people always, not all, not all, not all, but most, are always women and whining and begging. <laughs> hey, Jesse, boy, Jesse, you, you... <laughs> You know, I can't I can't no more with Jesse. I'm just, I'm just laughing because we know as far as from the truth, black no, people are setting up businesses that. every day. White people tell me that people, all the time about you people. I, oh, they go to you people. You know what Jesse, I mean. you're black. Let me ask Ray from you're Champagne. Black. Ray, real fast, you're on with Phil. Yeah, I'd like to ask Phil. Uh, you know, he's he's talking about how bad the blacks have it here. The Asians come here and, and do terrifically. They don't. They don't break the laws. They go through college and they set up businesses and they 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 get filthy rich. And they're not having the babies bl- out of wedlock. And, and the blacks, the blacks aren't doing that at all. You know why? Why? Okay, why? Okay, because the Asian community is segregated from the likes of uh, people like yourself, and unfortunately, we were integrated with you, and then now we got ruined because Jesse That's admits amazing. Jesse admits that we were doing better during uh, segregation than we do now. Uh, Jesse amazing. admits that. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Appreciate it. Back in a moment, folks. I need you all to subscribe, support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. Got it.